Hey kids, Miss Butcher here. This video is about solving quadratic equations by taking square roots. Now, you guys already know what square roots are. They are the root of a number of what you would multiply by it to get that number. So we're just going to do some practicing then. We want to simplify. Let's simplify the square root of 16. If I said that, you would tell me 4. It's not plus or minus 4 because I didn't say plus or minus the square root of 16. I said implied, implied positive square root of 16. So your answer is positive 4. If I want the square root of 12, I'm implying that I want the positive square root of 12. We can break that down. What you want to do, some of you have learned to make a tree. And so you go 12 is 2 times 6 and 6 is 2 times 3. And then you circle your pairs of twos and you say two root three. But a way that I think is easier is take your square root of 12 and just rewrite it as, as I'm going to actually do it over here, the square root of two numbers multiplied together. And you have to think, are there any perfect squares that will fit into 12? And our perfect squares are 1 and 4 and 9, 16, 25, 36, 49. Do any of those go into 12? And 4 does. So 12 is 4 times 3. When you break it into um, the, sum, or the, the product of two, two uh, numbers, and one of them is a perfect square, we can say, that's well, that's the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And the square root of 4 we know is 2. So that's 2 root 3. And it's a bit faster to do it that way, I think. All right, let's do another one. Let's simplify 3 root 2 times 4 root 3. When you have two um, mixed parts like this, we're going to multiply the 3 and the 4 together and get 12. And we're going to multiply the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 together and get the square root of 6. So when you're multiplying mixed radicals like that, put the whole numbers together, put the radicals together. All right, let's simplify the square root of 5 fourths. When you've got a fraction under a radical, you can split it up into radical of the top, radical of the bottom, and since this one has a perfect square on the bottom, that's square root of 5 over 2. Now let's do another one, square root of 6 over 5. So now this one is the square root of 6 over the square root of 5, and neither of those are perfect squares. And the general rule in math is you cannot leave a radical in the bottom of a fraction. You cannot have a square root as your denominator. So we do what we call rationalizing the denominator. You're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator both by the radical, only the radical that you have in the bottom. So here we've got the square root of 5. When I do it to the top and the bottom, I'm multiplying the top and bottom, so it's like multiplying by 1, so I'm not changing it. I'm just putting it in a different format. So what we have in the top is the square root of 6 times 5, which is 30. And in the bottom, I have, if you think about this, that's the square root of 5 times 5, which is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. When I do the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, I always just get 5. And it works that way for any square root. And that, then we need to look at that square root of 30 and say, can we simplify that? And 30 is 2 times 15, and 15 is 3 times 5. None of those are perfect squares, so we can't. We're done. Okay, this next one is going to be a little bit tricky. It's going to be something new for you. We need to fix 3 over 2 plus the square root of 2 because I don't want to have a radical in the bottom of my fraction. And so I put this little pumpkin with the pie in it in the corner because when you guys ask me about this, I'm going to say refer to the part of your notes with the pumpkin pie. And so you can either look at the video and find this page or you can write it down in your notes so that you can look at it. But I don't want to have to repeat these directions 47 times. All right, so when you have 2 plus or a number plus a radical or minus a radical in the denominator, I have to multiply the numerator and the denominator by what we call the conjugate of the denominator. And the conjugate of 2 plus the square root of 2 is 2 minus the square root of 2. So the conjugate is the same except the sign changes, the sign in between here. So then in the numerator, I have to multiply it by the same thing to keep it equal. So then on the top, I'm going to distribute 3 times 2 is 6, 
3 times negative square root of 2 is minus 3 root 2. In the denominator, I'm going to FOIL. Very important that you FOIL it. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times minus square root of 2 is minus 2 root 2. Positive square root of 2 times 2 is plus 2 root 2. And the positive square root of 2 times the negative square root of 2 is going to be minus 2, right? Because that's the square root of 4. But it is, you have to remember that it's minus. So now look here. Because this is negative and this is positive, they're going to just cancel each other out. That's why we multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate, because we want the radicals in the denominator to cancel out. So we have 4 minus 2 is 2. I have 6 minus 3 root 2 in the numerator, and I have 4 minus 2 is 2 in the denominator. And that's it. That is the rationalized version of 3 over 2 plus the square root of 2. All right, so remember, pumpkin pie if you need to know how to do this again. Okay, now here's a problem for you. Let's take the square root of negative 1. Uh-oh, we can't take the square root of negative numbers. But as we talked about in the beginning of the year, when we, um, when we talked about real numbers versus imaginary numbers, the square root of negative 1 is imaginary. And so this is the most important thing you're ever going to learn. No, I'm just kidding. But the square root of negative 1 is i. It's the letter i, the lowercase letter i. All right, so conversely, if I took i and squared it, if I squared both of these, square, square, I would get negative 1. So super, super important that you know these two things. But that now makes it possible for us to take square roots even when we have imaginaries. So for some practice, if I said rewrite the square root of negative a, we never want to leave it with a negative inside of there. So we know that that negative is the square root of negative 1, and then a is the square root of a, right? And we all know now that this is i, so we would say i square root of a. Um, so basically, if you see a minus sign under a radical, you're just going to turn it into the letter i outside the radical. All right, so let's try another one. Let's try the square root of negative 7. If you see a negative inside the radical, turn it into the letter i outside of the radical, and you're done. So if I wanted the square root of negative 9, then I'd have i outside and then the square root of 9. But we can keep going now because we know the square root of 9. The square root of 9 is 3, and so we're going to say 3i. We'll put the i after it just because we're used to like 3x, 3i. All right, what about the square root of negative 12 then? We've already broken down 12. We know that that's 2 root 3, but we have an i now. So now it's going to be 2i root 3. You see, the minus turns into the letter i. The rest of it is the same as what you already know. Um, something to note, if I put a negative square root of a negative, you can't cancel out those negatives. It's not like negative negative 36. There's this bar here in the way that won't let you cancel those out. This negative is the letter i, and so if I didn't have the negative on the outside, it would be 6i. But the negative on the outside makes it negative 6i. So this negative just goes in the end in front of your answer. Okay, so now that we know how to take square roots, how to simplify square roots, how to take the square roots of negative numbers, we're going to use that knowledge and we're going to do what this video is supposed to be about anyway, solving quadratic equations. So here's an, a quadratic equation. I mean, it's a basic one. All it has is x squared in it. But we're going to solve this by taking a square root. That means that we're going to isolate the x squared, which means I have to multiply both sides by 8. And 4 times 8 is 32. And then I have to take the square root of both sides. Now that we're taking the square root of both sides and we are creating the radical sign, now we will have our plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus the square root of 32. 32 is 16 times 2, isn't it? And we know the square root of 16, so it's x equals plus or minus 4 root 2. And I've seen it before where kids want to go 4 plus or minus root 2. That's different. That's not the same. This is a multiplication problem, and the whole thing is after the plus or minus. So don't do that. Don't do it or I'll yell at you.
Okay, just kidding. <coughs> okay, here's another example, solving by taking square roots. Once again, we've got to get x squared by itself, so we're going to divide both sides by 4. And negative 48 divided by 4 is negative 12. So that means x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 12. And we just did that, right? That We know that's 2i two, two root 3. So we have the plus or minus, and then we have the 2i root 3. Here's another. Negative 3x squared equals 27. So I am going to divide both sides by negative 3. x squared equals negative 9 x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 9, and we know the square root of negative 9 is 3i, so x is plus or minus 3i. And one last example, and this one's actually a hard one, the other ones were super easy, right? 3 times x plus 1 all squared equals 27. And the reason this is hard is because your little brains see this, and you say, oh, foil, 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 and you want to foil it all out, and you want to make a big nasty quadratic. But we're trying to solve for x. We're trying to isolate the x. And so we don't want to make a big nasty quadratic. We want to undo as much as possible. That's why we factor, is to undo. So this is already factored, if you want to think of it that way. So if we're going to get x by itself, first thing we have to do is move that 3. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. And then we're going to undo the square root. So we have x plus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 9, which is positive and negative 3. No imaginaries in this problem here. So we've got x plus 1 equals plus or minus 3. And if we take away 1, we have positive and negative 3 minus 1. So that's two different answers. Make sure that you're not doing plus or minus 3 minus 1. That's not what you do. You do, well, let me erase. You do positive 3 minus 1 is 2, and negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. So 2 and negative 4. And you can always plug them back in up here, right? 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. It works. Same thing for the negative 4. All right, this next bit is about falling objects. There's an equation for falling objects that you will have to memorize. And that equation is h equals negative 16 t squared plus s. h stands for the height. T stands for the time, and S is the starting height. So H is the, the height at time T, but S is the height where you started before you fell. All right, so let's do an example. All right, when will I hit the ground if I fall from a 64-foot cliff? So here's a 64-foot cliff. Here's me. Ooh, I fall splat. All right. When, how long will it take for me when I leave the cliff to when I hit the ground? How long will that take? All we have to do is take our equation, h, our height. So when we're done falling off the cliff, our height is 0. Negative 16 t squared. I don't know t. I'm looking for t plus s, my start height was 64 feet. All right, so I'm going to solve this. So I'm just going to move the negative 16 t squared to the other side. Positive 16 t squared equals 64. Divide both sides by 64, and I get t squared equals 4. And take the square root of both sides. t equals plus or minus 2. Now, because this is a word problem, and I'm not going to be falling back in time, although that would be really cool, we're just going to go with the positive and say our time is 2 seconds. I guess it would have helped if I had said t is time in seconds. So add that in your notes. Time in seconds. 2 seconds. That's a pretty short fall. And that's it. That's all I have for you guys. I felt like, like it wasn't enough, right? Have a good night. See you tomorrow.